Les plus grandes utilisations de ces huiles euh, se rencontrent, tout du moins pour ce qui concerne notre profession, que le syndicat Pro d'Arôme euh, a l'honneur de représenter en France. Merci. Ah oui, mais je ne vois plus mon texte. I have to wait. <laughs> I'm anxious to get started because I have a lot to tell you in a short amount of time. Que l'ambition de voir le maximum d'auditoires et d'auditeurs. Par conséquent, Madame Dorone Peterson est euh, australienne. Elle est naturopathe, mais formée aux États-Unis, dans l'État de Rhode Étant bien entendu que les naturopathes sont reconnus aux États-Unis, d'après ce qu'elle m'a dit, et à ce moment-là, elle s'occupe actuellement, elle dirige un collège sur, je dirais, l'étude des plantes médicinales. Elle va donc nous parler de cette fameuse manuka qui nous intrigue beaucoup, et nous allons dans quelques temps euh, découvrir donc euh, ce résultat de secret. Je vous laisse donc la parole. Merci. Merci. Bonjour, good afternoon. Firstly, I'd like to say thank you uh, very much to Michelle and uh, the other organizers of this conference for uh, such a superb effort in such a wonderful venue. I want to um, follow on with what uh, Mr. Tessier was saying about um, essential oils and their potential for antibiotic-resistant um, bacteria. In this presentation, I want to introduce you to Manica essential oil, Leptospermum scoparium, and share the complexities of its chemistry and biological activity with specific emphasis on the need to ensure the correct chemotype is used. Now, somebody just said to me, they don't want to hear any more about chemotypes today. Well, I'm sorry, here we go. I'm excited about the potential of this oil, with the increase of antibiotic-resistant bacterial strains, particularly the methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, referred to as MRSA. I'm hoping that my talk today will stimulate interest in the research potential and clinical uses of Monica. Monica is in the Myrtiaceae family, as is eucalyptus in Australian teaching. Monica is pronounced Monica or Manuka. It doesn't really matter. But it is known by a number of common names, including red Monica and tea tree. You may also see it referred to as tea tree, spelled T-I, but this is quite a different plant. It's Cordyline australis. The problem with calling it tea tree is it's confused with Australian tea tree, Malaleuca alternifolia. Well, we can thank Captain Cook for that. He gave the name tea tree to all of the plants that he used to make tea for his crew to combat scurvy. Hence, many, many botanically unrelated species in this region have this name. Manuka is often confused with Carnica, which is Conzia ericoides. Well, it does look similar, but Kanaka has a higher monotopine content than Manica. So I recommend re referring to the soil as Manica, not New Zealand tea tree, and if necessary, use the Latin to avoid confusion. Ready for a slide? Now, do I have to, uh, okay. Monica is one of the most widespread New Zealand native plants. It has also been found growing in eastern and western Australia, New Guinea, and Southeast Asia. It's a slender tree going, growing to about 26 feet, and the foliage is grey-green and the leaves pointed. Flowers are usually white, but occasionally they are pink or red.
morphological variants of manuka are found in different geographical regions of New Zealand. For 150 years, manuka infestation of farmland has been a nuisance in New Zealand. It was actually a weed. Quick growing manuka invades pasture land. Oops. I can't. Ah, oh, that's better. I thought it was my eyesight happening. <laughs> Quick growing manuka invades pasture seemingly overnight, so much so that it was known as the farmer's curse. Once used as firewood, it is actually now a valuable cash crop because of the essential oil. With the commercial viability of uh, the oil, it has been grown now from selected seeds and it can be harvested within 15 months. This is actually showing 15 months growth. Manuka need not be sprayed or treated with chemicals. The harvest is sustainable and it does not damage the environment. Let's take a quick look at the history and traditional use. To the ancient Maori people of New Zealand, Aotearoa as it's known, Manuka long had medicinal value. It was used as an anti-inflammatory and a blood purifier. They actually boiled the leaves and inhaled the steam for colds, which is interesting because it's very effective for sinusitis. Manuka is the Maori name, and the translation actually means nervousness or anxiety. Interestingly, one of the traditional uses described in the ethnobotanical literature was that the bark was chewed to enhance a relaxing sleep. I was wishing I had Manuka bark last night. Yeah. <laughs> Manuka essential oil is produced by steam distillation. The oil is found in the glands and the leaves in capsules and is harvested prior to flowering with a mechanical cutter or by hand. It's important that it is not flowering when it is harvested. If the plant is flowering, other vol volatiles from the nectar are extracted. There is a shift in chemical composition and while the oil has a sweeter aroma, it does not have the same potential for uh, antibacterial activity. One of the criticisms I've seen of this oil is that it is too expensive. Well, that's true, it is expensive. One of the reasons it's higher cost is due to the longer distillation required. The most active constituents, the triketones, which I'm going to introduce you to today, are amongst the the uh, highest boiling point compounds known. They require long extraction, up to about five hours. And if the process is shortened, which does mean costs are reduced, the triketone level drops and so does the activity. So just some more shots of the harvest of Manuka. However, the specific activity of Manuka makes it extremely valuable clinically, despite its higher cost. 